today on We Love It Outdoors. This is prime crappie time. So we got the ultimate stealth. They're not gonna know what hit them. Look at that one right there. Look at that and beautiful it's thing. Bill. You have to appreciate a fish like that. And there he is. Oh, look at him fight. What a slab. It's a crappie buffet. Nice job, guys. I'm Dan Eigen, full-time guide and avid outdoorsman. These days, it's easy to get stuck inside in a virtual world. But the real world is outside. Look at that awesome looking fish. So I challenge you to put your instincts to work making real memories with real people. <laughs> because we love it outdoors. As a longtime guide, I'm well aware that there are almost no sure things in fishing. But every spring, when the ice in the North Country disappears, the days lengthen and the waters begin to warm. Like clockwork, you can count on a ritual migration of fish into shallow waters to feed and then spawn. It's a short annual window of time when at least part of the fish catching formula, their location, is completely predictable and it's an opportunity for some fantastic fishing action. For me, this is a great time of year to get young people involved in the sport, and I never miss an opportunity to spend a day in the boat with my son, Mac. I mean, this is prime crappie time. Today, Mac and I will be joined by one of the premier panfish experts in the upper Midwest, Brian Bro Brosdahl. Hey, Brian. Hey, how you doing, Dan? Good. Mac, Hi. what's up, man? How's it going? It's going what really well. What a great day. It's my son, Matt. You, you like catching crappies? Yep. All right. He's great. Gonna, he's going to hammer down on them today. Good. Open Let's go get some crappies, down. man. What do you think? So, Brian, back home, the walleye bite is really tough right now. So we've been chasing crappies, and it seems like one day they're out, and the next day they're in. What are, well, they, what are they doing up here? We're kind of in the middle of the feeding to spawning thing, so they're going to be spread out in two different spots. They haven't quite all got to the spawning area, and they haven't all left the feeding area, so we're going to kind of hit everything. We're a little bit behind on weed growth, so that's a magnet. If we can find some old stubble of any kind that doesn't give off any toxins, there's going to be fish in it, like hard stem rushes, maiden cane, um, even rice. These are key spots, and if there's any cabbage, it's a magnet. Okay, so what we're gonna fish here, since the water temperature's jumped up, as you can see, it's 65. Yep. In the low 60s, crappies start looking for spawning areas. And they're feeding in the muddy bottom areas up till now. Areas that have a deep hole nearby, or canals, boat harbors, you name it, creeks, on all these different lakes. Right now, we're fishing a hard bottom area, and uh, there's still some hard stem rushes, there's maiden cane, and underneath, there's cabbage starting to grow. With this little bit of wind coming in, we'll have a chance to get them, but we better fish before it gets too rough, because rough weather chases them out. Okay, okay, well, let's get them then. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna use side imaging. We're only gonna use the right side. And I'm gonna go to, let's just go to about 75 feet, because then you get real detail. We'll hit exit. And we're gonna side image, and what I'm looking for is peaks and pockets, we got the talon, so we're not dropping an anchor, making a mushroom cloud. We can go in and spike, fish that area, and then pull out real quietly, or float away, and then spike again. Sure. So we got the ultimate stealth. They're not going to know what hit them. <laughs> this this iPilot is the key. I'm using my remote to control that motor from back here, and this is this is awesome. Yeah, okay, yeah. look at here. Are these fish? That's all weeds, and okay. there's fish inside there. Oh, there's even some bigger fish here. I'm sure there's a few bass, maybe a few walleyes this time of year. But let's uh, let's go fish this point here. What I'll do is I'll drop an icon. See that little pocket right here? Yeah. There's weeds and then there's a pocket. Yeah. I'm gonna drop an icon right in here because they're gonna be cruising that. So we'll hit mark, exit, and then I'll go back to the screen. Oh, there it is right there. So we'll zoom in. We'll go, we'll go anchor just upwind of our icon and we could drop our baits right inside there. There you go. 
Yep. Just lift. Lift. Atta buddy. Hold them up high. Keep it up. Yep. Just keep that rod tip up. Let me get the net. Atta Atta buddy. a buddy. net here. here keep her up, oh, buddy. Man. That's a crop eye. Atta way, Mac. There we go. <laughs> All right, buddy. Now let a little bit of line here. Hey. All right. Look at that, Mac. You want to hold that one up for the camera? Yeah. Nice. Now you see how dark they get? The, the males really put on some dark pageantry here. They, they're getting real dark. They're making nests. That thing hit it hard. Good job on the catch. Now these are the these are the size you eat and harvest. Good good tasting smaller fish. The bigger ones we get for photos. So yeah, if you want to save that, go ahead and put them in the well, and we'll. Uh, I'm gonna net this fish. Dan's got a fish. Here. Yep, I got one here. Oh, that's a big one. It is a nice Easy. one. Easy. Huh? He's, yep, he's yep. right on the. Here we go. All right. Look at that one right there. Look at that. And beautiful it's in the frame bill. All right. <laughs> Let me get that. That is a beauty. Give me a knuckle. All right. That's what we're here for, buddy. Oh, look at that. This this is this is something else here. Look at that fish. Wow. wow. That's actually a giant male. These are monsters. And we want to keep the, some of the genetics in the lake, so these are the ones we throw back. Aren't they fun to catch, though? They are so fun to catch. And they, with this gear, being able to get them through those reeds. Oh, yeah. you, you got to be able to get them up on the surface. These things fight like a bass. This one even had its face out and it was jumping so it's awesome awesome big fish we this, better let that one go this one is going back mac just caught a nice eater but this one right here you just you have to appreciate a fish like that and you know that's that's why we're going to have fish for the future oh, right there absolutely so. awesome man good job On a spring day in northern Minnesota, my son Mac and I are with Brian Brosdahl on an early season crappie quest. All right, I got a crappie and got to keep him up on the surface because there he is. Oh, look at him fight. Can you believe how he fights? Get him in that net, Mac. That's a beauty. Right. That a way. All right, this is what we like. And uh, just the just simple plastics here. I. Uh, no minnow or anything. I just want to try the paddle tail. Wow, he was hooked good. What a slab. Just a, a paddle tail like this impulse here. Just a simple paddle tail like this impulse and they smack it. Look at that. What a beautiful fish. Nice job, bro. Isn't that awesome? That is awesome. All right. All right. Shallow water float fishing can be as simple as you want it to be but there are some specialized tools and techniques that will up your odds for success. Rather than a standard length rod, we're using the St. Croix 10 foot moderate fast action panfish series rods. The added length is key in getting fish up and out of the heavy cover. We've got braid for our main line to a small swivel, then a light fluorocarbon leader to a variety of small jigs from the undressed lead heads to hair jigs. A slip float and a small bullet sinker are placed above the swivel, so if you do get snagged up, you can break the light fluorocarbon line and all you'll lose is the jig. We're tipping our jigs with a variety of specialized panfish plastics like the Impulse line from Northland Tackle as well as live minnows. Bobber fishing is, is an excellent way to put your bait in front of the fish's face all the time. We're able to fish in a jungle just by dropping in pockets, you know. There you are. All That's right. a crappie. Yep. Now, when, when they if they get wrapped, I just keep a little bit of pressure on them, and then there he goes. Nice All right. job. All right. I got one too, bro. Oh, we got a double. Yep. All right. Let me grab the net here. You got the net, Mac? Mine's a little skipper. Rocky. Perch. All right. Great. That might be another, that might be an eater, huh? Yes, it is. That's what we're talking about. Now this one's an eater. You know it's it's fun when it's hard to get small ones to eat. You're catching these big ones and you know we don't want to keep those, but that's an eater. If they're under 12 inches, they're good fish. All right, Mac, let me hook you up with one of these. Pink and white, pretty good combination. That's a great crappie color. And I'm gonna run the paddle actually flat like this, just hanging down. And I don't even have to put it all the way up on the collar. I'll run it just past the collar. I like that, that extra color on the collar there. 
and then a little bit we'll get a minnow on here let me show you how this is going to look this is a smorgasbord oh man <laughs> look at that wow uh -huh. it's a crappie buffet right there catch them man mac that hole right there there's fish in there just wait for you okay just flip it in there just nice and gently Here we go. There we go. There we go. There there's, you go. There's a there's crappie. A crappie. Yep. I'm not going to show bro what bait I put on here though. Well, I, I'm going to net it, so I'm going to find uh, out. No, you're not. I just already got it in. <laughs> Look at it. Stealth mode. Should we keep that one? Yeah, that's an eater there. Good job. Shh. Look at that. <laughs> show the camera. <laughs> Pow. G give me a knuckle on that, bro. Pow. See that? Isn't it something you reach that that critical water temperature and it's like every fish just turns on and oh yeah every every fish has its peak temperature walleyes love 55 to 60 degrees that little window they're just hot crappies actually uh, in the low 60s pretty hard to beat they're feeding hard they're making nests they, they want that extra energy and uh, we hit it just right this is great The We Love It Outdoors team is chasing shallow water spring crappies with Brian Brosdahl in northern Minnesota, and so far the bite has been fantastic. But even spawning crappies aren't immune to a high sun, midday slowdown. One of the ways to combat the midday blues is to keep moving and trying new spots with untouched fish. The other is to wait out the crappie slowdown by enjoying the non-stop action of some of the other shallow water spring fish, like the often overlooked and always unappreciated rock bass. Rock horses. Yeah. Isn't that fun? Heck yeah. That is awesome. Look at that. Beautiful, clean, freshwater fish. People think that you can't eat rock bass, and you know what? I tell you to, to do the taste test. Fillet up some of these, fillet up some bluegills, crappies, perch. Do a little sampler and see if you can really tell the difference between the fish. This one right here is gonna get eaten by our cameraman. He loves rock bass, and he's gonna give them to his in-laws. He does love his in-laws, but they're gonna <laughs> love those. Oh, boy. Ooh, all right, yeah. I tell you what, slow down a little bit, but it's really bright out and uh, still getting a few tons of other stuff in, up in the weed beds now, and uh, but there's still crappies around. It's uh, the middle of the day. You know, this is the when things usually slow down and we're getting a few fish, so just gotta stay at it. Right on, dude. You know what, should we toss that one? or Let's toss that one. We got a good start in our well. Okay. We could always... Uh, you know we're gonna get a little flux of fish. When it gets really bright out, you get the bright skies, it does slow down, but the, the shaded part of the weed beds always hold fish and just gotta grind through it. We hit a bunch of other stuff, had a great time catching bass and whatever bites. Now we're back on the crappie scene. Oh, here we go. All right, here, let me get the net. It's not a whopper, so don't, don't go crazy, but it's an eater. Yes, we'll vet them. All right, paper mouth. There we go. Okay. Good job, man. Thanks, bro. They're yeah. in there. Another well, beautiful fish, huh? Yeah, you know, with these paper mouths, you definitely want a net. You try to hoist them up, you'll rip the mouth. Conservation series net by Frable is nice because your lures don't get stuck in it. Instead of being wrapped around the hoop, it's inside tucked away. Hey, I'm gonna put it back in the net and you take it to the live well. How about that? Sounds good. So bro, we all know that, you know, walleye 30 is at first light in the morning and then again at dusk or at night. 
you find the same thing with these panfish? Well, in, in years like this where uh, we had a lot of snow and all the vegetation's gone, and it's taken a long time to get going, morning and evening are key. During the day, they lay low, and it's hard to get them. You gotta land right on top of them, and even if you do, they don't always bite. Morning and evening, or as we got a little breeze kicking in, always helps. So, bro, walleye fishing, right? Yeah. Wind, 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 right? We got, a, we got vegetation right here, these mm -hmm. reeds popping out, and obviously, point, wind, is blowing in. I mean, do you take any, do you see any merit to that? Well, yeah, and also because it's a point and uh, they're gonna be, there's gonna be all kinds of active fish on that side, it's, it's worth checking out. And there's a lot of different ways to slice it and there's other weed beds, so you don't have to sit on one. Keep moving, you keep catching. There oh, we go. Big crappie. Yep. Oh, yeah, it's a crop. Hey, Mac, while I'm rigging, will you net Brian's fish? Way to go, bro. You need a net on that one? No, don't need a net on this Bluegill? one. Bluegill? Crappie. I'm gonna swing her up. There you go. Just a little crappie. It's good to see many different year classes in this body of water. That's a sign for the future. Let that go. All right. Here we go. That's a bigger fish. I don't think it's a crappie though. You never know. They're pretty big sometimes. Yeah, that's true. Boy, it might be. Yep, I think it's okay, a big one. Okay, that's a netter. Yep, there. this is a netter, Mac. It is. I like that. You never know, because it is a brute. Yep, there. it's a big one. There we go, buddy. Look at that. You got Just, it. Yep. Look at that coming in, buddy. With these, um, these long rods. Look at that thing. That's that's a slab there. Oh, look at that. Well, there's proof there, right there, that uh, the right conditions, the right to low light periods are everything. We've had a, a super hot, bright, sunny day, and. Uh, these females are coming in to spawn. One thing you gotta know, they're not just gonna be in there on a hot day where it's flat calm. They're gonna be outside working the deepest weed edge they could find. We found a deep weed edge, we're working it, and it's key times. We're getting closer to the evening. Great time to catch fish. Way to go, man. Let's put it back, huh? Yes. Yeah, that's a beautiful fish. There's something about an early season panfish fest that is hard to beat. Maybe it's the fast hand-to-hand -hand action, or maybe it's the prospect of a good meal of fresh fish. But I think it's simply the pure enjoyment of the warm sun and open water after surviving another North Country winter. You know, today uh, we, we've gone through some areas and very specifically looking for spots that have the most growth, the deepest water nearby, and also wind, playing the wind. You don't want to be sideways to the wind, you want to be pitching downwind. Stealth, coasting, using your tarova to get in and around areas, and then putting the talon down, and the talon's just awesome. You can lift it and lower it. It isn't like pulling up an anchor. You just press a button. There we Bro, go. Rose got one. You can get the net. Is that a netter? Yeah, okay. that's a good one. Ooh, oh, look at this one. Let me tell you something, I switched to a hair jig. I got a, a feather jig called a firefly and a tipping it with a minnow. Look at that slab, they're starting to bite really good. That's what we're talking about, man. Sweet fish, Nice. we'll take that anytime. Too big to keep, but we're here to have fun catching them. I'll tell you what, in this jungle, these things can really fight. You got to get them out. You want to fight them in the upper third of the water column, not the bottom. You ain't going to make it. Trying to bring this guy through the deep weeds ain't going to happen. So you want to get them up on the surface and they're still going to fight. These things are big slabs. We're going to let this one go. What a beautiful fish on a feather jig. Firefly. Oh, right at the side of the boat. Oh, that's a nice dark one. Look, there. At, look at this. That's awesome. Right as I was putting that other one in the well. What a right, beautiful right fish. Right under the boat. <laughs> it, I think they're turning on, but look at that. That's an eater. Oh, beauty. Just a black crappie right under the boat. So yeah, the key, the key to this is being on them. Stealthy. We're, we're certainly on them. No stomping. That's mine right there. Oh, Max Ooh. got another one. That's a horse. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, yep. nice nice that's, don't don't nice pull it any further. Nice and slow. Rod tip up. Rod tip up. Nice job. All right. 
a boy. You're rocking him. Yep. Way right to go, buddy. Good job. Look at that. We have found it. Hey, Mac, I think you're catching more oh, fish than your dad right look now. Look at that. It's another purpose eater. Mac, go get another one. Roll, got a crappie, a nice one. A netter? Huh? Yeah, nice. There we go, bro. All right. All right. Good job fishing and landing at the same time. Well, you're good at it, Dan. I'll tell you what, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, love those things. This is great. I'll save you some steps. I'll take yeah, that. there you go, man. Nice. Oh, look at here. All here, right. I'll give them back. Okay. This is a nice one. I'll walk them. Get me that. Oh, yeah. Look at this one. Holy Slabosaurus. <laughs> Slabaroni. Oh, baby. Oh, look at that one. It's wrapped up in that reed. Can I'll you reach like, down there, bro? Yeah, can, let me, can I, should I grab onto your belt? Oh, where you is it? <laughs> no, I, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, wow. That, that, that's almost a double. What, what a horse. Wow. <laughs> Way to go, man. You you are the man. That is just a beautiful, beautiful crappie. I think he loves crappie fishing. Oh, I always have, but you know what? I'm, I'm not used to catching big ones like this. It's great. But we better keep it down, right? Right. Because you know what? That is that is a fact. It's like crappies don't get this big by spreading the word and having a lake burnt out. Yeah, this is an eater. That's a monster. This And this one goes back. And that one is going to go in our tummies. But look at that. Whether it's a celebration of the arrival of spring, a love of speckled slabs, or like in my case, an opportunity to share my passion with my son, early season crappie fishing is just a whole lot of fun. And in a sport where success rarely comes easy, shallow water spring crappies are as close to a guarantee as you're going to get. And like us, I guarantee you'll love it. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> Up. How on that? Look at that fish right there.